Revenge Sevenfold is the uh, fourth studio album by the heavy metal band Revenge Sevenfold, so it's self-titled. Uh, this came after their really popular Shadow of Evil record, which was their third release overall. Uh, so this was a bit of an in anticipated record by fans and uh, critics alike, although critics weren't really a fan of the band, but you know, they're still good overall, I would say. Uh, this record is requested by Zach Sharman, I believe, who is a big fan of the band. And he actually said that they are one of his favorite bands, or one of his favorite metal bands or something. Which was kind of a surprise to me, I thought he was more into the more, you know, classic stuff, but... You know, he's just into mainstream rock and metal, I believe, so, you know... Don't blame, don't blame Zach, it's, uh, you know, approachable music, so there we go. <coughs> it's for the masses. Uh, so Ford Studio album, uh, Shadow of Evil was pretty good in my opinion. It was a bit too stretched out and a bit too long in my opinion. And the self-titled release already does a lot of things right to, um, you know, to better the Shadow of Evil record. Because some songs just dragged on forever, you know, like 8, 9 or 10 minutes. And although this record still has some tracks like that, it already has way, you know, it has only one eight minute track, which is really repetitive, but... Uh, but overall, you know, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't really hurt the song that much. We get Critical Acclaim, which is the first song. Very heavy opener with that scream from, um, from uh, you know, M Shadows. Very powerful scream to open it up, five minutes long, Critical Acclaim. Kind of a, uh, you know, I believe it is a middle finger to critics, but you know, um, if you're a heavy metal band, you don't really care about that, I think, but, you know. Um, but I would say that they, the band really got critical acclaim after this song. It is a really great song overall. Uh, a lot of energy <coughs> displays on the song, a lot of, you know, vulgarness. Uh, so this song is kick as it uh, kicks off the album perfectly. And they really could've, couldn't have chosen a better opening track. Or maybe you should have gotten with this, but it's Critical Acclaim is also really good. And we have Almost Easy, which is the second song. Arguably my favorite song on the record together with Critical Acclaim. Uh, written by The Ref. And I just love the tempo of the song, you know, I'm not insane, I'm not insane. The, the pre-chorus and, um, you know, the chorus itself, Come Back To Me, it's almost easy with that melodic intercourse in the, in the chorus. Really, really great stuff by The Ref. You know, because he is the writer, and I believe he sings on this track as well. I do really love that he sings on uh, some of these tracks. Really, really, uh, he has a good voice, I would say. Really good good singing drummer. Not my, not my favorite, but still, you know, still has his place. And then we have Sc uh, Scream, which is kind of the um, the single single of this record. Written by uh, M. Shadows, The Rev, and Zeki Vengeance. Uh, this song overall is pretty good, I would say. It is definitely... Uh, I would say the, we the weakest single of this record, or maybe another sh single, but we will get to that. But this song is definitely, you know, it's good. It's uh, 4 minutes and 50 seconds long, so it's not too long, it doesn't drag on, but I just feel that it is kind of a more easier version of Critical Acclaim, maybe, or almost easier, kind of a combination of that, but not in the best way, but still overall a good single. But in my opinion, the weakest. And then we get to the weakest single, to the strongest, which is Afterlife. And, Ar and Afterlife is arguably Avenged Sevenfold's greatest song. Although I know that people think that this song is overrated as well. But, uh, the you know, the chorus, the, the kind of string orchestra at the beginning is beautiful. It's written by the, the ref again. You know, he writes a lot of great songs. I, I just noticed that. I just noticed that. Uh, but this song overall has a very great orchestra at the beginning. Starts off very great with that opening guitar riff. Um, the solos by uh, Sinister Gates are great. Uh, yes, he has in my opinion the greatest solo on there for sure. And uh, Sinister Gates didn't even write uh, the solo. Fuck no. The riff did that. So he might be kind of the secret weapon of the band really. Because he has a lot of uh, soul writing credits. Which you know the, the biggest hits of this record and arguably of all time by the band. Uh, so great song, great solo, great you know when he uh, holds that kind of uh, you know final uh, note at the ending of the solo. I just really love when, <clears throat> when he does that. Uh, when he pulls that you know string. 
Uh, so that is a really great sound. And then of course Amp Shadows comes back with the uh, with the chorus. Uh, and this record ends on a high note. Very great song. Or in my opinion, the greatest event Jamfold song ever. Uh, so there we go. Uh, but unfortunately, the record kind of dumps down after this because we get a Gunslinger, which is kind of a generic uh, country, and it's written by Sinners the Gate, Shadows and the Ref. Uh, so this song is a bit more, you know, uh, kind of rock and roll in a way, kind of more uh, traditional heavy metal. Uh, instead of that other heavy metal, but uh, yeah, but this this song just dumps it down a bit after the very spectacular, you know, single uh, hit after hit thing with the four sh with the four hit singles coming back back of each other back to back, which is really great. But then we get uh, Gunsling, which is honestly I don't really care for this song. Uh, it's alright, you know, it has an alright opening. It starts out kind of cool but then kind of you know dumps down a bit in, in the country department and that is probably where this record um, is the most you know it it is the weakest point of the record that it is a bit country and yeah boy I, you know I don't like me some country and especially modern country which is basically that it's basically all garbage it really is and yeah you know uh, Advanced Sevenfold's Gunslinger is no exception for this so yeah, it is, it is pretty much a stinker, really. Then we have Unbound, The Wild Ride, which, which kind of continues with that uh, country-esque thing. Although this is way better. Uh, it is a bit more diverse, it is a bit more progressive as well. Uh, but it's still kind of country in a way. It's, you know, it still is good. It still is an improvement over Gunslinger, but it's still country. Um, you know, I don't hate it, don't love it, I'm just neutral about it. Then we have Brompton Cocktail, which is definitely one of the most unique songs of the record. Uh, this song overall just kind of is uh, alright to me. You know, it didn't, it wasn't country, at least from what I've heard, and it wasn't the first four songs. But it was still pretty good, I would say. It is still an all rounder. I would say it's kind of fitter ish on the record, uh, but still overall pretty good song, I would say. And then we have Lost, which is kind of the more mellow and the darker track of the record. Um, I honestly think that this, is, this is probably the sleeper track of the record that most people you know don't really recognize because they're too bus busy with the first four songs or maybe the last two which we will get into. Uh, but Lost is honestly a very mellow and a very uh, great underrated track I would say. Check it out if you haven't already because it, in my opinion it's it's not the greatest song of the record, but it's honestly not the worst, it's not Gaunt Country and it's definitely a really good song, so there we go. Then we have A Little Piece of Heaven and this is the only 8 minute song of the record and I honestly think if the band could have just made this like a 4 minute hit, you know, radio song, you know, I do love me some hits, some good hits, but there we go. But if they kind of shorten this record like, you know, uh, twice, or you know twice the length of the record like you know four minutes instead of eight like it is now you would probably have a better record and probably a better song in my opinion because it's mostly the same shit it is just mainly you know it starts with the string orchestra at the beginning which sounds very nice and then you have the the mellow vocals by M Shadows then later it goes into a more darker at, uh, atmospheric kind of tone with uh, M singing really, really uh, melodically and very in tone, in pitch. And then he does this, you know, baby don't cry with the delay. I, I yeah, I'm not gonna, you know, uh, I'm not gonna mention that or not gonna, you know, repeat that, but it's definitely questionable. Um, I think it's funny, but not in a good way, you know, not in a kind of uh, anthrax way or something like that, but or suicidal tendencies, whatever, but uh, but it's definitely uh, funny, I think, but not in a good way. It kind of ruins the song for me. Although I do like, I do, although I do like the tone and the kind of melodic uh, nature of the record. Those, you know, those uh, cr uh, those cry I I moments by uh, M Shadows are just kind of cringy for me. It don't really do it for me, and the song length is also also way too long. This re it it's mainly you know the first four minutes are kind of the same, then it is kind of different for a minute, and then it goes on for like another three minutes. So you could have easily cut the song to five or four minutes, and it would be exactly the same. 
Which, you know, uh, which the band still di did a lot on Seed of Evil, but they only did uh, once on here. So that is already a big improvement. But try to stop that concept entirely because you're just wasting everybody's time here, really. Um, yeah, you know, no offense to the band, but really don't do that anymore because, you know, making eight minute songs that are kind of the same, you know, three minutes and then five minutes added or something, five minutes filler, which, which you all already heard, is kind of pointless to me, but maybe you like that, but you know, there's the replay button for, so I don't really see the point in that, but there we go. Then we have Dear God, which is the closing song on the record, uh, written by Sinister Gate, Journey Christ, The Ref, and uh, oh, it's written by the entire band. So maybe you could have just said Event Sevenfold, and you know, I could just say that, but there, there we go. Um, or actually, with five, who the fuck is Johnny Christ? Yeah, I don't know. Johnny Christ, I don't, probably the bass player, I don't know. Uh, Zach Vengeance is probably the rhythm guitarist, you know, let me know in the comments. If you know, uh, Zach Sharon maybe, but there we go. Uh, Dear God is another country-esque song, and this is definitely, I wouldn't say the worst one out of them all, but it is definitely the most recognizable, because that's twangy kind of tone to it. The vocals by M. Shatters are really uh, country-esque, really emo, edgy. And overall, don't really fit the song that well. Uh, it's an overall catchy song. And it has its melodic, you know, moments. And I do like, you know, the kind of country um, tone that the record has. But overall, the vocals are kind of, you know, not killing me, but kind of putting me off. And the song overall is kind of too cheesy for me. It is way too country. You know, maybe uh, cut it off a bit. And maybe wrote it something like She's Today, because that was a pretty heartwarming song that still, you know, was kind of emotional with not too much country just a little bit but this song dives a bit too much into the uh, country territory so there we go still an overall pretty good song but just a bit too much uh, twang and M Shadows vocals again not the biggest fan of them so M Shadows definitely had the worst the, the worst vocal tracks on the last two I would say they were really good at the first four five ish songs but you know, uh, Critical Claim was great, Almost Easy was pretty good, Scream was eh, it was alright, Afterlife was really good. So cr Critical Claim is arguably his best vocal moment on there, or maybe Afterlife, both great songs. But I would say, you know, the strength of this record is the beginning, and the saving grace of this record is kind of the last, although a little piece of heaven is way too long. But I would say the record kind of, um, you know, uh, kind of flops or kind of you know gets hazily after or kind of in the mid section of the record with Unbound, Brompton Cocktail, Loss is also kind of you know experimental. Gunslinger did grow me a little bit <laughs> after this review, but uh, fucking no. But it's not right song. I I I I did hate on it, but the title is pretty cool and the song overall isn't that bad. So there we go. Uh, so I would say the first five songs are really good and I would say the last two songs are really memorable and catchy but I think that the the, the six, seven and eight songs are a little bit forgettable and yeah you know even A Little Piece of Heaven was too long and Dear God was yeah it was kind of cheesy so it's not a perfect record but I would say that this is the, the, the best record I've heard by the band so far it's better than Seed of Evil. Um, it's probably better than the first two, Wake in the Fallen was pretty good I heard and I believe seven, hearing the seven trumpet or something is pretty ass, I've heard, but you know, if it is requested, I would check it out because I do like this band overall, but they're not my favorite. But, but yeah, there we go. I would give this record like an 8.4 out of 10, still pretty good, but it's had its cheesy moments and its filler ish moments. Forgettable tracks, but the first four tracks were really great, the last two were pretty good. Gunslinger was alright and the other songs were kind of add to me. So still pretty good rating I would say. Let me know what you think about this record. Uh, if you heard it already what do you think about Avenged Sevenfold in general. I'm honestly not, not the biggest fan of them. Or I cannot say that anymore because Close just gets aggravated with that. Um, I do like the band but I'm not a fan. Maybe that's the right I don't know but um, yeah that's probably right. You know I do like the band but um, 
not a fan overall of them, but there we go. Maybe you are, and let me know what you think. They're, uh, they are your favorite band, you know, Jack Sharman or maybe others. Or maybe you hate them. Uh, probably Rock Do. Rock Do hates a lot of bands, but he's, he's kind of a hater. I mean, there we go. Um, but, you know, let me know why you, why you love or hate the band, and let me know if you want more, you know, albums done by them. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this album review. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel on this for my videos like this one. Let me know what you think about this record by them. I thought it was good. I think it's definitely the best record uh, so far. But, uh, you know, maybe the stage is better or maybe Nightmare. But we, have, we will have to see about that. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going. Uh, let me know what you think about this record. God bless, safe, take care and peace.